Hello friends, this lecture is in continuation with your lecture series of CNC machines and automation. I hope you have studied the last unit which was unit number 1 and today we are going to start with unit number 2. This unit is very important like uh, uh, in terms of your how to design a CNC machine, how the basic factors about which a CNC machines are designed and what are the equipments or you can say what are the uh, elements which constitute a CNC machine yeah, and what will be their qualities, what will be their features while designing it. Okay, So this is unit number 2 which is called construction and tooling. It means we will see how to construct a CNC, what are the basic features and how these are designed. Then secondly we will discuss about the tooling, what different tools are to be used over there. So this is a learning outcome for today's lecture. We will discuss about the what are the constructional requirements of the CNC. What are the basic needs of CNC so that well while designing we need to see those things, see those requirements and design it. Then the basic, uh, the four parts which we are going to discuss about the CNC is lubrication and cooling of CNC, swap removal, guarding and safety devices and drives like the motors. Correct. So firstly, I will tell you what are the constructional requirements. Whenever you design a CNC, you need we, you have a basic features, you need, a, you need a minimum value that this should be included into the CNC machine. Like problems may occur in CNC due to, here when you are designing something uh, and you are using above its limit, then this problem could occur. So what are the problems on which depending upon we are designing the CNC? The first thing is the excessive pressure of tool on workpiece, correct? And uh, this is quite big problem because in a closed door of CNC, you can't see that how the machine is reacting towards your uh, feed and depth of cut. Yeah, so what we want to do, we, we just need to do the work very easily and very fastly and so we provide maximum feed and depth of cut and that creates excessive pressure on the tool. Usage of high speed, sometimes we need to do the, we finish, we want to finish the work earlier, that's why we use the high speed. So this came into, this comes out with difficult situation for the CNC machine because it creates the noise then the friction and the deformation because of the thermal effect, because of the high speed and the high temperature. So this factor leads to low production, accidents and maintenance costs would be high for your CNC. Here, so what are the constructional requirement of CNC? Correct, what, we, what you want from the CNC, you want your productivity should increase. Everybody wants it, yes that's good. Then we need the accuracy, the accuracy of your machine should be very high, it should be perfect you can say. Yeah, so what, but some of you have, do not know what is the accuracy, so I would say this is the chart through which you can easily understand the accuracy. If I go for the very first circle, correct, I'll discuss two things, the low accuracy, uh, the accuracy and the precision. In this case, these dots, check out these dots, these dots are not close, not close to, very close to the center, correct. So this is low accuracy and low precision, but see on this, on the second one, correct. This case it is not either in center but they are very close to each other so it is very low accuracy because we haven't hit the bingo but yes there is a high precision all the darts all the dots are on a, on a nearest distance then the third is the dots are near to the center but not very club not very close so there is high accuracy but low precision then the last one this is the all the dots are in exact center and they are very near to each other yeah, so that is high accuracy and high precision. So this is simply, so we, you want from a CNC that should be higher in accuracy and precision. Simplicity of design. Designing is simple so that you can easily understand what machine is saying, what you can see and how it is handling the things. Then the operator sees. Operator can easily handle the machine. That's again the reliability and the safety and easy control. So these are the very basic construction requirement of the CNC. Then we will discuss the very first point that is the lubrication and cooling of CNC. So if I would say the lubrication and cooling, both are two different things are there. The lubrication you use when the friction is in between the two sliding surfaces, we are using the lubrication and cooling to cool down the surface while the uh, your tool is cutting the workpiece. You need to cool the CNC too. Fine, both are different things. but whenever you provide some lubrication you added on to the cooling effect onto it. So in the designing factors we are discussing about only the lubrication of the CNC. 
So, how we can do the lubrication? So, lubrication can be of two types. The first one is the wick lubrication. Correct. It is generally the basic principle of this wick lubrication is it is the oil rises raises due to the capillary action. Correct. Like for example, if you are watering the plants in the roots, but how it reaches to the final leaf of the tree, that is just simply the capillary action. Similarly, you can see in three in these different diagrams here. So this is your rotating element, but the wick due to wick lubrication, this oil is sucked into the rotating element. Similarly, in here and in here. Correct. So all these things are rises because of the very small thin holes between the surfaces which makes the cause of capillary action, which takes the uh, uh, oil lubricant from the sump to the rotating element. Clear? The simply when you dip a part of your cotton inside the water, so it random, it just moves up even if there is no water. Clear? So same thing, it is a self lubrication, it is because of the it is called wick lubrication. Then we are having the splash lubrication. Correct. You can see in the video also the splash lubrication is working. Like in this case, your piston is moving up and down. Correct. Your piston is moving up and down. This is a special element is added onto the piston. Correct. This element when it moves down, it splash the lubricant onto the other parts of the machine. Correct. Internal parts of the engine. Similarly, this kind of splash lubrication is also used in the CNC machine. Fine. You can also see in this video that how this splash lubrication is working. It's a very simple process. Then the next is swarf removal. The second part is swarf removal. What is swarf removal? Means whatever the waste you have produced, whatever the cutting material that you have cut, how to remove this from the machine. There are two ways, smart removal from cutting zone and swarf disposal from machine tool. Correct. You can see this bed is slanted. This CNC bed is slanted. So whenever the cutting takes place onto this surface, correct, it falls onto the slanted bed and because of that slanted bed, it falls onto this area. Correct. It just directly moves out to the machine. Fine. This is called the swarf removal from the cutting zone because cutting is already happening over here. So this the whatever the material would be cut it down that will be fall down onto the bed and moves directly to the exit. So through here it will come out of the machine. So it is for the smaller machine. If the machine is so bigger, correct, then you use these kind of the system, correct. When the material, uh, your waste material would fall onto the surface and then the motor will take it out and falls from here. So it is collected from the base of the that is called swarf disposal from machine tool. Fine. So there are two types of the swarf removal. The first one is from the cutting zone and second one is from the machine tool. So cutting zone is but just because of the bed. The bed is slanted so whenever the cutting takes place then your waste material would fall into the gauge here. Then swarf disposal from the machine tool. So at the base of the machine this kind of machine is working over there. Here that this line is working over there. So whenever falls the material over here then it moves to the one collection point over here. Fine. So this is a swap removal. The next is guarding surface, guarding and safety. This is prime important for a CNC machine because CNC is completely automatic. And if something happens to the person who is taking care of it, there's a very uh, this is mishappening, this would be the accident because he can't see what is inside the CNC machine. Here, so guarding and safety devices, there are two types of safety. The safety of machine element and workpiece. The first one is the safety of machine and second is the safety of operator. So first how we make the machine to be safe from itself. Correct. The first one is overload protection. Overload protection means whenever your machine is moving beyond its limit, beyond its capacity, an overload protector will automatically shut down the machine. That's the first one. Secondly, the clamping sensor. Clamping sensors are those things in which you hold your workpiece or you hold your tool. If some of one is some of uh, if any of one is loosen up, correct, then it will not start the machine. That is called clamping sensor. Then work handling sensor. That work is the material still inside the machine. So whenever you check that, that is work handling sen uh, sensor. Then me uh, measuring device guard from swap. You know that CNC machine is moving at a very high RPMs. Their uh, MRR is very high. So we need to save 
all the devices, all the sensors which are inside the machine from your swab, from your waste material, second from your coolant, correct, or your cutting oil, fine. We need to save these things from the uh, cutting oil and the uh, your waste material, fine. Then we are having the safety of operator. Now, operator who is working onto the machine, he should be safe. Here, the, these things are provided around the machine so that the while person working onto it, he feels very safe. The first one is perimeter guard door. If the machine is inside the guard, inside the canopy, correct? So, it is safe. Any mishappening that would remain inside the machine, it would, would not come out. Here, so the doors are provided. So, unless you do not close the doors, the machine won't start. Correct, that make sure that. Then second is pressure mat. Pressure mat is outside the, on the periphery of your machine. Clear? For example, this is your machine. Then the pressure mat would be outside of the machine. Peri uh, outside, perimeter of the machine. Correct. So what happens on it? When a person suddenly, accidentally, maybe uh, intentionally put a pressure onto that mat, the machine will automatically shut off for the safety. Third one is light barrier. You can see over here the light beams. Correct, a light beam. Whenever the machine is working, a person try to put his hand inside the machine, the machine will off. That is called light barrier. Then the safety clutches. Safety clutches are these. That the pedals are provided or the clutches are provided or the locks are provided so that the machine would remain safe and the operator would also be safe from any kind of accident. So these are the guarding and safety devices. Next is drives and motors. This is very important because machine runs onto the motor only. Clear? There are various type of uh, motors do we use here, but the very basic types are spindle drive means through which you are driving the spindles, correct? On which your uh, tool is rotating or your workpiece is rotating, that is your spindle, main spindle. It required to have a constant power and that could be provided through your electric motor or your fluid motor, that AC electric motor, everybody knows about AC or DC motor. Correct, there are further uh, differentiation or bifurcation of these things, but the basic are AC or DC motors. Do we have, and nowadays we do have the uh, servo motors, the stepper motors, okay. So those kind of motors are further uh, topic of discussion, but now there are electric motors, AC and DC and the fluid motor. And second one is a uh, feed drive motor that is called the constant torque motion. Correct, there are two different things, the constant power and constant Torque. Constant power requires the RPMs, the rotation, your spindle drive. Correct. Your RPMs would be higher depending upon the machine, depending upon your workpiece, and depending upon your tool. So the constant power. But whenever you need to do a feed, that you want that whenever you are cutting a material, your feed should be constant. Your feed pressure should be constant. That is called constant torque is provided while you are cutting the material. Correct, where you are providing the feed so that you do not get any prints onto the surface of the workpiece. Yeah. So, for that purpose, we are using the feed drive. Yeah. So, this is all about today's lecture. If you wanted to see my previous video, must subscribe this channel, Tiny Steps, and further lectures will be uploaded onto the same channel. Thank you and take care.